it. What am I growing the beard for? Oh, so I can be Santa Claus at Christmas, of course. I mean, who doesn't want to make everyone's wishes come true? It's sort of like being a pastor. Not really. Hey, everybody, welcome to The Gathering Place today. Good to be with you. So glad that you found us. If you want more information about The Gathering Place, go to our website, tgpchurch.com. My name is Daniel Davenport. I am not Santa Claus. Don't let the beard fool you, nor the belly. Hey, uh, I want to say to everybody who is logging in with us right now, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud that you are taking the time to uh, open up your eyes, open up your heart to receive something from the Lord. And so today we're going to jump into the Word, and I believe that I'm going to share a message with you, with you that's going to encourage you. Uh, I do want to invite you all out to our uh Christmas service, Christmas gathering. This is coming up this uh, December 20th. And so we'll be here in person on Sunday morning. We're going to just read the Christmas story. Uh, but if you can't make it in person to our campus, we're going to be online with you as well. And so uh, I want you to look forward to that. Tell a friend, maybe gather your family around and say, hey, let's get into the uh, get into the Christmas spirit together. You know, the Christmas spirit, what's that all about? It's not just about uh, giving and receiving gifts. It's about preparing our hearts for Jesus, right? And to celebrate who he is and, and remind ourselves of what he's done and how God stepped out of eternity into our timeline here to save us. And so I love Christmas. I love what it represents. I love the time that we can have around it to really reflect and uh, see God do some miracles. And you know, we need a miracle in our lives right now. Isn't that true? Somebody say amen. You in the back of the uh, house over there, sitting on the couch, say amen. Yep, I don't see you, but I'm sure you're there. Hey, thankful to Susan for hosting us today. Everybody say hi, Susan. If you are uh, able to get into the chat right now and you're watching this live, would you say hi? Let us know who you are and where you're from. And uh, if you're from the town or, you know, whatever city you're from or Shire or village or, you know, country, doesn't matter. Just let us know that you're on there. Say hi to somebody uh, with us. Hey, I want you to pull out your Bible with me right now. And let's uh, remind ourselves this is no ordinary book. Let's say this out loud together. This is my Bible. It is God speaking to me. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. So I open my heart today to hear God speak a word forever. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. to Luke chapter 2. And so even if you are watching from home, I mean, unless you are driving when this is playing, I want you to jump in and participate as much as you can. So you can pull out your Bible, you can pull out a little notepad and journal and, uh, and take some notes and just, I find this that studies show 
that when people pull out their notes during a message, it makes the pastor feel better. And so if you would pull out your notes and take notes, it would make me feel better. Uh, it might even help you as well. So I want to ask you a question as we're opening up our Bibles to Luke. Did I say one or two? We'll go to Luke chapter one. Uh, as we are opening up our Bibles there, I want to ask you this question. Have you ever had like the perfect plans all set out and then something totally or someone totally interrupted those plans? I mean, who has that, who has that not happened to? Uh, if you've ever had kids, well, just the news of having a kid can do it to you. <laughs> but you also know that you can have the best plans. You're going out. You've got babysitters all lined up. You know, you've got reservations at a place that you've waited for for so long. And then suddenly the kid's sick, right? And you can't put that on the babysitter. Well, you shouldn't. Some of us could do it, right? We're like, hey, here you go. Johnny doesn't feel well. Just keep him at arm's length. He projectiles. You know, you could do that, that kind of thing. But the reality is uh, life sometimes throws us things that we did not expect. And so you've heard the saying, expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. That we should expect the unexpected because life is full of uncertainty. But how do you really expect the unexpected? By nature of it, it's not expected. And so, how can you expect it? It doesn't make much sense. But it does make sense because there are unexpected things that are coming our way. And so, what we're really saying is we need to prepare for that. And sometimes, when we have news of the unexpected coming our way, we need to then learn how to carry ourselves through that. For example, if you've ever, uh, well, if you've ha ever lost a loved one, no one is shocked that people pass away. It's 100% guaranteed the number one cause of death is life, right? Like everybody who lives eventually dies. The, the unexpected part for most of us in most situations, it's how and it's when. And so we can expect that sure, our life has a beginning and an end. It's just how or when that's going to come to an end. And so for us, we're not expecting it to come to an end at any moment and in a terrible way or even a great way. But we are expecting it to happen. We just don't know how or when. So what do we do? We prepare for that. We prepare for it in practical ways like life insurance, wills, we prepare, we prepare for that in a very practical way, which is a spiritual way, but getting our hearts right before God, right? So, so repentance, confession, placing our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, Him alone, right? We prepare for it relationally for what's left behind so that we forgive and receive forgiveness from others, that we work on our relationships. We say the important things that we love while we can love and hold while we can hold. We, we prepare for these things. We expect the unexpected. In other words, we keep very short accounts, right? So that uh, when certain things come our way that we weren't expecting, we were ready for them. It's sort of like having a rainy day fund. You save up money uh, for a time when you might need it later on that you don't know. You don't know what's coming up. As a church, we, we had saved money and we had prepared for the future. And so when COVID came and the shutdown happened and, and we're not able to uh, gather together as a church, we're never concerned about, oh, we need to open because of money. We're never thinking we need to open so that we can keep, you know, the bills paid or anything like that. It's never been a concern of ours. That hasn't been an issue at all. Why? Because we were prepared for the unexpected. We had no idea it would come our way. And so many of you, you are weathering this storm because of decisions you made in the past, uh, whether that's financially or relationally. You know, some people are struggling right now um, with their lack of connection to others. And they're, they're isolated because their, their depth, the bond, the relationship, the community they had was lacking before. And they didn't realize it because the pressure wasn't on and, and we could take for granted those relationships and, and the easy access to people around us, but they weren't really as deep. And then in times like this, 
those relationships get tried or strained or we get distracted or busy or uh, we're just not able to, to gather as much. And so we, we find out, oh, we weren't prepared. We weren't expecting the unexpected relationally. And so we have some work to do with our relationships. Uh, there's a story in the Bible. I bet you thought I was going to go here to the Bible. Uh, there's a story in the Bible that's really relevant to Christmas and the time we're in found in Luke chapter 1. And there's this little young lady named Mary. You know her uh, as the mother of Jesus. Well, before she was the mother of Jesus, she was a young woman who is betrothed to get married to a man named Joseph. And betrothal is like engagement, but it's far more serious. So betrothal became, it came before getting married. Uh, but in order to break off a betrothal, you, it was like a divorce. You, ha- you divorced to break that off. And so in this world, you know, they weren't just falling in love and necessarily, maybe sometimes, maybe not all the time, but, and then choosing, I'm going to get married to that person and run off, get engaged, get married. Uh, these were typically arranged marriages and, and families got together and worked out all the details, which by the way, as a father of two daughters and two sons, I could say I'm probably uh, in favor of because sometimes, you know, you've got guys that come around and you're like, not that one, not that one. Or, oh, I kind of like, like that one, but their family's crazy, so not that one, right? Because we know there's going to be more connection. Anyways, that's a side note. That's a side note. has nothing to do with this message. But back to the story here. Mary, she's young. She's a virgin. She's betrothed to Joseph for marriage. And uh, she's, she's a, an honorable woman who is faithful to the Lord. And she is doing what God had called her to do in the life she's called to, to live. And she's going about her business. She's betrothed. So that means she's making wedding plans. She's in process. She's thinking about her future. She's thinking about her family. She's thinking about what that's going to be like. She's thinking about uh, the experiences that, that they will have. And, and, you know, the things that a young lady would dream about as she's preparing for marriage. She's going about her business. And uh, suddenly, you know, one day, I love this right here. One day, it, the... Uh, The Bible says this in Luke chapter 1, verse 26. It says, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel appeared, or he was sent by God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose surname was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Okay, she is not praying about an angel visiting her. She is not looking for God to come in and show up in this manner. She's really just looking at her future, what life has for her. And uh, making her plans and preparations for that. The angel of the Lord gets sent to her and says, Hey, you're highly favored. You are blessed among all women. The Lord is with you. Now, that tells me some things about Mary. Mary was somebody who, uh, she's one who lived faithful before the Lord And wasn't sitting there depending on, okay, if I just live faithful long enough, then God's got to show up. And and then then she gets to the point where if he hasn't shown up soon enough, she's sitting there questioning why, God, why haven't you done it? That's not the faithfulness that we're talking about. We're not talking about a transactional relationship where she's trying to earn something from the Lord. She's just serving the Lord. She's got the favor of God. She's in covenant with God. She's blessed by the Lord and God is with her. So the angel shows up and he says this to her. And uh, suddenly she's sensing like something's going on here. Something's a little bit different than, you know, normally when angels show up and talk to me. Probably an angel had never shown up and talked to her before. Uh, It's never happened to me. It might have happened to you. Some of you, you might think it happens all the time. If it happens to you all the time, that's awesome. 
but you might want to talk about it with some spiritual mentor. Okay, so the angel says this to her in verse 30 says, and then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. I imagine that uh, if an angel shows up and starts talking to, to you, shows up, you're probably going to get a little scared. I probably would too. Like he's not there, then he is there. And, and like in the room. So typically in the Bible, when you see angels show up, one of the first things they say is, don't be afraid. And that's because people are afraid, right? I would be. Okay, I'm kind of like concerned that this guy appeared out of nowhere. Okay, so he says, behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over all the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. So he brings the news right here. Now, the news about Jesus is great, but remember, he said, and you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a child. So he doesn't just come and tell her Jesus is coming, that the Son of God is coming and he's going to save the whole world and sit on the throne of his father, David. He says, and you're going to be pregnant with him. What? That is not according to plans. In fact, Mary looks at him and says, how can this be since I do not know a man? Now, when she says, I don't know a man, she means I don't know a man in the biblical sense. You know what we're saying? Okay, for the sake of anybody here who doesn't know what we're saying, uh, go talk to your mom and dad, right? So she says, I don't know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. When God shows up in a powerful way and answers your prayers, that's a blessing. But when God shows up in a powerful way, but you weren't praying about it, that's a pretty major interruption, right? It's not just an interruption, it's a disruption. When God reveals himself and says, you thought you were going this way, but you're going that way. That right there changes things. It's the unexpected hand of God at work in a person's life to fulfill his purpose. I want to talk about that for just a moment. I've heard a lot of people who have said, I just need to find my purpose or you need to find your purpose. And we, we talk about it as if we have these unique purposes that the world was created to revolve around us. I do think we have purpose, but I think it's maybe a better idea to, to dig into what's the purpose of God and how do I fit within that? Because His purpose is what's going to come to pass. And so let me say that again. It's better for us, instead of trying to find our purpose, because we end up looking to ourselves, it's better for us to find out what our what is God's purpose? What are his purposes? What is he doing? And how do I fit with that? And so suddenly you realize that you are part of something bigger than yourself. And, and the very little you is a very important part in the big picture. And God uniquely designed you to fit into his purpose and plan. So find out what God's plans are and then jump in on that. Mary is interrupted by the Lord there is something that is unexpected that came her way and suddenly she's going to be expecting the unexpected. Now, there was no way that Mary was prepared for what the angel just announced to her. In the sense that you couldn't think, you know, one day I know God is going to show up and I'm going to be the virgin prophesied of in the Bible from hundreds of years ago. I'm going to be the one to to uh, give birth to the Son of God. She didn't, she didn't have any idea. She didn't have any idea. There was no reason for anyone to guess that. But somehow God saw fit to do that in her life. And, so now, and she was now suddenly expecting that which was unexpected. So she had to carry it through. Something came her way that I believe she was prepared for in the sense of she had a pure heart, she had a humility, she was faithful to the Lord, and she was willing to 
uh, follow it through and, and to, um, she was willing to, to take the word of the Lord and run with it. In fact, we see that happening. We'll get there in just a second. Verse 36, the angel says, Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has con- also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who is called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Okay, a couple things here. And expecting the unexpected. First thing is, is this. Live a life that is honorable to God. Live a life that is faithful. Live a life to where you are trustworthy. That whatever God has, uh, He knows he can, he can put it into your hands and He can trust you with it. That you're going to rely on Him and you're going to maintain inter- integrity and character and faith and hope in the midst of that. That's the number one thing. Second thing is this. The angel mentioned Elizabeth, the, the relative of Mary. He said, Elizabeth is also expecting the unexpected. And I think he lets her know that because he's saying, Mary, what you're experiencing right now, you're not alone. There are others that are going through this as well who have received a promise, who have received the miracle, who have received the blessing, who are expecting the unexpected, and they are ready to see God do something significant in their lives. Uh, Mary, you're not on your own. And so... With God, nothing is impossible, Mary. I want you to know this. And it's not just impossible for you, but it's impossible for your relative. Uh, It's not impossible for your relative Elizabeth either. It's not impossible for anybody because with God, nothing is impossible. And he's speaking words of faith and assurance to her. When God brings something your way uh, that is unexpected, that is challenging, that is bigger than what you could imagine. He wants to speak words of faith that will nurture that (laughs) because in that environment of faith in believing is where you see the plan come to pass or you see the, the promise come to pass. It's where you see God show up. So what does Mary do? This is the second thing. Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So the first thing that Mary did after she received news of what God wanted to do is she went and she surrounded herself with a like-minded person somebody who shared a a common faith. She surrounded herself. She got into an environment that would nurture the promise of God. That's really important because when God does something in your life, when when He says He wants to do something significant, when He reveals something about His plan to you in your life, you can't go to... uh, you can't go off to Freddie Faithless and start telling him and find out that he's going to tell you why God can't do it in your life. You can't go around blurting it out to unbelievers. You can't go sharing these things to people who are living compromised lives. You've got to protect that promise. You've got to protect the things that God has spoken to you. And the way to do that is make sure you're in a faith-filled environment and you're talking the Word of God with people who speak the Word of God and speak words of faith and will affirm you and affirm your relationship with God. And and when you come away from that person, you come away believing God more than ever before. Do you have somebody like that in your life? I mean, I think about this. I think uh, there are people in my life that every time I'd come away from a conversation with them, man, I'd want to, I'd want to, give my more of my life to Jesus. I think of uh, my, my senior pastor who I served under for the past 12 years, Jerry Dearman. Every time that we would get together, man, I wanted to believe God's word even more. And I wanted to hear his voice even more. You need people like that in your life. The very first thing Mary does, she goes to Elizabeth, who also was experiencing something with God. Don't go and, and try to nurture this thing with people who aren't having a common experience with you, a common faith. 
So she goes and, and Elizabeth back to the scripture and says, Elizabeth spoke this out and she said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of, of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. Listen to that kind of affirmation. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of the things spoken to her from the Lord. I want to say this to you right now. I'm going to get close, close, close to this camera. You are blessed when you believed because the things that God has spoken to you, He will fulfill. Now, if you remember back, Mary's first response or initial response after being told how this thing's going to go down, she said this, let it be to me according to your word. That is the kind of posture we take when God speaks something to us that is so over and above what we could even ask or think. God, let it be to me according to your word. How, how do we live that way? How do we live that way? If you're experiencing something in your life that doesn't line up with the word of God, You've got to step back, get into the word, look at how people overcame, look at how people dealt with, look at how people responded to certain situations. And you've got to look at that and say, oh, I want to be like Mary. I want to be like Mary to where I say, let it be to me according to your word, Lord. Or I want to be like Elizabeth, where when somebody comes to me excited about the things of God, what the Lord is doing, Elizabeth says, oh, there's such a blessing on you right now for believing because the things that God has spoken to you, He will fulfill. You've got to make sure that you are in that environment. And so Mary, as a result, first of all, she hears from the Lord. She says, let it be according to your word. And she runs off right away and finds somebody of, of like-minded faith. Christmas season. We talk about this, about a season of family, about God showing up about connection and community. And some, some of you may be isolated right now or are feeling disconnected. Um, all I can tell you is don't wait for the phone to, to ring. Don't wait for somebody to knock on the door. Take the initiative. Take the initiative. Mary didn't wait for Elizabeth to come to her when she knew that God was wanting to do something in her life. When you're expecting the unexpected, what was the unexpected? The unexpected was the Son of God showing up in her life and filling her uh, and, and consuming her life for the rest of her life, right? Uh, which is what happens with us is when, when we receive Jesus into our life, uh, it, it really does consume the rest of our life. Our relationship with God, it changes everything. It's a total different uh, trajectory than the direction we were going before. If Jesus just came into your life to make it a little bit better or make you nicer, I don't think you met Jesus. <laughs> I think when you meet Jesus, he completely changes your life uh, inside and out. You may have the same career, but I'm telling you, not only is your eternity uh, going to be a whole lot different, but your life here is going to be a whole lot different. When, when that happens, um, when, when that happened with Mary, <laughs> she took the initiative to reach out to somebody else of like-minded faith. Uh, I want to challenge you right now, write down the name of one other person that you either are connecting with or you're going to connect with. And then as soon as I'm done here, you reach out to them, you send a text, you say, hey, let's connect, let's get together, let's have a phone call, let's have a Zoom call, let's you know, FaceTime together, come over to my house, I'm gonna swing by your house or let's meet for coffee. And then talk about the things of God that are happening in your life, the meaningful things, the things that matter, the things that God has spoken to you. Uh, when I came, when I came here to the gathering place, my wife and I, I received some things by praying that I felt like the Lord was, gonna, was going to do. He was saying over this church. He said, one, one of these things he said is that the gathering place, will, it, this will be a place for times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And so I said, let it be to me and to us according to your word. And you know what people are starting to say? Oh, 
when we come in for worship, oh, when we get in the word, the relationships we have, it's like the Lord is showing up and I'm, I'm growing in my faith or my passion for Jesus is being renewed. All of that's happening. Another thing that I, I believed that the Lord said is that he was restoring. He was, he was bringing restoration. So not just refreshing, but restoration to the gathering place. And, and with that, I believe that some of the vision that had lied, laid dormant in people is coming alive that in our congregation and those who have been part of the gathering place, that there's gifts and dreams and, and, and callings that have been kind of on the back burner. And yet um, the Lord is saying, no, I want to release those things. And so even as you're watching this right now, you might think, oh, I'm so limited or unable. But the Lord has spoken some things. He has spoken some things saying that he's going to restore not only that, but I really believe that the Lord was saying there are people who have been part of the gathering place in the past that God is bringing back to, He's bringing them home. He's bringing them back to their home church. And uh, I'm seeing that with my own eyes. And, and you might even know people who are, have been disconnected from the gathering place for whatever reason. Uh, reach out to them because God is stirring the hearts of men and women and families to come back and maybe you have even kids who were part of the gathering place invite them back let's see what god will do what am i saying i was not looking for any of that to happen i just prayed and felt like the lord said some things he shows up and he says some things so i wasn't expecting it but i was expecting god to show up and then when he spoke some things i am now expecting the unexpected in other words the things that i was not expecting before he told me about so now i am positioning myself to expect them by faith i'm coming into agreement and saying let it be to me according to your word and then you know what i'm doing i'm getting around other people who have that same faith that's what we do that's how we we handle uh, the unexpected in life we surround ourselves with other people who know that with God, nothing is impossible. I hope, that, um, I hope that you're encouraged today by this. I hope that you can join us next week, whether it's online or in person. As we do take time, we're going to read through the Christmas story. I'm actually going to go through some of this and more, and we're going to have other people as well that will be reading. And, and uh, I just really believe that there's something powerful about us going back to the book and saying, God, tell us a story. But let me, t let me share this with you. I'm not just reading the Christmas story that begins in the book of Luke. In fact, the Christmas story itself begins way back in Genesis. And so we're going to start there. Can't wait to be with you. I'm praying for you. I love you. Again, if uh, there's anything we can do to partner with you at this season of life, we want to do it. Until then, live out your faith more than Sunday. We love you and God bless you.